Welcome back, everybody. Wow, what yeah. a musical intro. Thank you, Sam, for helping me with that. It's yeah. episode 184. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. How did we get here? What a long, strange trip it's been. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, today we've got Nico. Hi. We've got Sam. Hi. And of course, what's your name again? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's us. Jordan Allen, it's everybody. Us. Yeah. Um, so, guys, um, I mean, there's a lot going on. As you There's usual. a lot going on. It was my birthday just the other weekend. I got a mandolin. Yeah. Oh, and hey, boy, oh boy, is a mandolin fun to play. Hmm. Just yeah. saying. Like a tiny guitar? Ooh, yeah, but even cooler. It is like cooler. a tiny guitar. I don't know. There's just something about it. It just fits like a glove. When you play it's a mandolin, like is it mountain called handling? Music. Yeah, your man, <laughs> man handling. Mandolin handling. Man handling. Man handling. Man handling. <laughs> Y'all man handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought about that before. When you man handle a mandolin. Yeah. You feel you like do? you're in the the old Smokies when you play it, Sam? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's something yeah. special about it. Like the chords and like the the, the way the scales and strings are tuned and oriented it's just like yeah. it's more a more natural way to play melodies it's it's really interesting hmm. yeah and it's an up the tuning is an upside down guitar well uh, kind of like a violin it's a traditional it's like tuning. a violin yeah which is also an upside down it's guitar. a bass guitar it's a bass guitar backwards I never thought of it that way or a violin forwards that's you know, <laughs> how do you view life yeah <laughs> or a violin forwards hey <laughs> this guy <laughs> the standard tuning anyway this is mine um, Sam, you know, for how Sam, many... Sam, um, Sam's trying to steal my LaCroix right now on the wow, show. Wow, oh, thieving hands. <laughs> <get awarded. laughs> Here, witness. Have mine. I, That's I not looked, yours. No, it's not mine. <laughs> I looked at it, I was like, is this open? Maybe, I made how a many much poorer choice. choice. If, I took, if I took a sip... <laughs> no, I caught you before here. you did. No, here, here, here. Take, take a sip. Of, oh, cheers. Okay. I chose to infuse my body with adrenaline at, what, 420? Taurine? Oof. What is... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> good times. Good what times. good times. <laughs> yeah. Just Taurus Sam, things, huh? For how many metal albums you've made, Sam, you sure could start yourself a bluegrass band if you wanted to. Now that's the point of with folk metal is that you get to do both at the same time. Mm-hmm. Right. You always Yeah. Like I already recorded it for the beginning of a metal song and it works great. Nice. Can I be can I be vulnerable and ask a question? <laughs> This is a All safe right. space. All right, heck yeah. You better not yeah. cry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where did you don't cry. blue blue why is it bluegrass? Nobody knows. Uh, uh, nobody of, knows. No, no, it's a it's type of blues. Grass. It's the blues. Well, bluegrass I'm is a type like of grass. This, like a blue cheese kind of thing? Yeah. Well, isn't bluegrass just fast blues that's a little peppier? Why grass? I would get I would venture that bluegrass is a type of grass that you find in the south. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to look this up to verify, but Kentucky bluegrass is a type of grass actually yeah. and i believe that bluegrass music because it came west through the mm. appalachians into kentucky which is where most of it was sort of found originally they found um it. yeah actually they did kind of find it um and then there was this guy um oh, oh my god i can't remember Christian his got name it. this is oh. yeah is Bill, Monroe. After Bill Monroe's band, the Bluegrass Boys. Ah, oh, the That's Bluegrass it, yeah. Boys, of course. So They're, Bill Monroe. Issue is important to everyday people. <laughs> Bill Monroe started the Bluegrass sound, and then there was another. There was another guy. I'm blanking on his name right now but he invented he invented the three pick banjo the three pick and banjo yeah that's right isn't that where it's like bluegrass all about like the it's basically mario He's kart the music one who gave it that <laughs> <laughs> mario Bluegrass kart is bluegrass style. i never knew that's cool yeah that is sick uh okay. yeah. earl yeah. scruggs okay so earl scruggs earl scruggs yeah. everyone knows and loves this guys man. you gotta this know about this. such this an overlap important, between this visual important effects musical and history here. <laughs> blues of like a hand in the Sorry, garden, man. history let me just get my piece out about earl scruggs okay okay so the, <laughs> we're, the bluegrass the banjo the banjo is very important to bluegrass and originally it was an it was an african instrument and it used to do that what's called the claw hammer style playing where you kind of you pick at it and then you slap it Kind of with mm. like rhythmically, 
And then Earl Scruggs, like, <laughs> lo- he he lost his finger or like broke his hand when he was a kid, and so he didn't he couldn't do that. So he just started playing it with three fingers. Oh mm. wow! And he invented like this totally new sound with it. Um. Anyway, wow, that's where it comes from. Of the Thank things you, I Christian, expected to hear when I up. sat down ten minutes ago. Right. Let me get my my opinion out about Earl Scruggs was not one of them. You just never Listen, know what's going to happen. You never know what you're going to find there in the mountains. And then they yeah. went into the mountains and they did find these old songs that people had been carry that they, they had carried over from like Scotland and Ireland, and they hmm. you know turned them into bluegrass songs. Wow. Yeah. And now well, you yeah. know. Well, now I know. I guess I asked yeah. the question, so no regrets. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> yeah. Well, nothing Anyways. like kicking it off with a little culture here. There you go. To warm mm-hmm. things up here to ground us. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're all dancing around the main topic of this podcast. Oh, yes, we're we are. We're just waiting. Uh, we're waiting for something to make it first. What is it? Topic. Is CGI hurt? a bad word, guys? <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Why is CGI a bad word? Well, is it? <sighs> did it become a bad word? Yeah. I, I don't know. It did. Yeah, like well, when, you hear, <laughs> when you hear that somebody does something for real in a movie, you're like, "Wow, I would love to see that." Yeah, I've, that's that's just how it works. When you hear someone says, "Oh, I did it with CG in my movie," you're not like, "Oh man, I got to see the CG." You know, it just it doesn't have the attractiveness. And then even, I guess, more importantly, it's like, unfortunately, for every good the effect shot, there's you know a hundred bad ones. Mm-hmm. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a tough comparison. Let me reel it back. All right. Okay. In the fifties. All right. We're watching what is it? Jason and the Argonauts. That cool mm-hmm. skeleton scene pops on. What do you were people rolling their eyes? Or were people like, wow? People were well. We would say people are like, wow, but reality might be that a lot of people are like, whatever. This whatever. is dumb and for kids. This is claymation. Yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that might be actually what a lot of the reaction was. Now, to be fair, the only people that mattered were the people that said, wow, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 No one, everyone forgot all the negative stuff or mm-hmm. the apathetic this opinions. Was, these were very close to the same people who ran out of the theater when it was footage of a train. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So clearly are, there was a... Clearly they're numbskulls. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was pre evolution era. Well, you're theater. talking about about a fifty year leap in time there. Jordan. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking of yeah. like once again you're seeing something which is it's like ultimately like what's the purpose of visual effects? It's to convince somebody, you know, of mm-hmm. something that's happening in your story. Well, not even convince. Well, I something. think it's just tell purposes. the story. It's yeah. it's it's too it's just to tell a story. You're like, look, none of this is real. They're actors. I mean, granted, they're real people, but they're pretending. And so just like they are pretending, we are going to add other pretend elements into this. And sometimes they are. Well, there's like they don't look real, but at least they play towards the story. I feel like there's visual effects either try to not break the illusion, a.k.a. make things look 100 percent real. And their job is to erase the boom microphone that came into the shot or put this actor's face on the stunt person so that, you know, they still look like the stunt person. We're not breaking the illusion. So there's that visual effects side of things which is kind of also like the magic trick side of things. And then you have the, I need to imply something in my story. I need to communicate something in my story that's not real. And I'm not worried about it looking real. Mm-hmm. Like, I just want to tell my story. Like, I need a castle in the background. And it's clearly going to be a matte painting or a model or a CGI, you know, castle, whatever. It doesn't matter. My story needs a castle. I don't care if it's scribbled by a child's hands. Like, but that's what my story needs. There's that side of visual effects, which is basically animation. Like so much of CGI is actually just animation with a photo real filter on it, mm. you know? Yeah. And Bollywood know. uses that a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. I think of RR as a great example. You know, like we've talked about it. Like the, the effects are definitely, they're getting better and better, but they're still like visibly visual effects, mm-hmm. but they don't deter us from enjoying the story. It's just helping us tell the story. Like yeah. the tiger scene or all the tiger scenes really, you know, it's yeah. it's just a method to you get know, you there. Is it, isn't it, isn't it really just a matter though that like, there's no such thing as bad VFX. It's just bad movies. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's an argument. Isn't, isn't, isn't that really the thing, you know, where like, I don't know. Uh, what is it? Like a costume designer walks into a theater or pops something on Netflix and they're like, ew, those pants. <laughs> like, you know, oh, I can't believe they're wearing that. You know, like, oh, this is so gross. I wish I had never seen this. You know, is, is you know, it's like 
anyone can critique things here, but like ultimately when you see a bad VFX shot, you don't go, haha, because like it's bad. It's mostly the context of an already bad movie that's now serving you bad VFX shots. So it's funnier in the in the context of this already, you know, train wreck. Yeah. Of, well, a, of a film. If you're trying to make VFX that are supposed to be totally real because you're trying to not break the illusion, then the moment you can tell it it's not real, you're you fail at, at the VFX there. Just like if a if a magician is trying to palm a coin and you can just see the coin go into his palm and they just he screws up the sleight of hand, like and clearly he ruined the magic trick. But like in other times VFX yeah. can be wacky and wild and you can totally tell their VFX and Yeah, it's like are you gonna say Star Wars failed, you know? <laughs> Because so <laughs> yeah. you watch those, some some shots and you're like that that looks like that's fake. No, I mean I don't believe Star that those Wars isn't trying to are really be real there. at times. But there are times when it does try to be real. You know, like Star Wars isn't trying to make the lightsabers look fake. It's trying to make the lightsabers look like real things. Yeah, but you see like a little Ewok guy and you're like, this is a guy in a costume. Yes. And you're like, <laughs> this this movie sucks. But he's I mean, <laughs> did people just replace CGI with the the natural struggle of trying to portray? non-real things on film like yeah i think so if we were if we were having this yeah. podcast in the 80s on tape decks with our like old-fashioned microphones we'd be talking about how like man the new costume work just sucks it was better when they did costumes like this you could totally tell it was like more real or when they didn't have costumes they just had to like yeah. hire weird looking people or all the puppet guys <laughs> going like these puppets suck like you know? <laughs> like i did the puppets on star wars and i'm watching uh well, like I don't know. The new guys who are doing the puppets on Willow? Boo. You know, <laughs> you know like look at these lamers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I like also, that that you're that's I think that's that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. It's really just like I don't know. It's it's like the the language and the way people communicate about criticism is so I don't know. It's more widely available, I guess now with just internet culture in general. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know. What did people say when Star Wars the Phantom Menace came out? CG City, right? Well, I mean, we I we know. loved it because we were like all 12, but Yeah. Yeah, when Phantom I Menace came out, I don't know. I, don't know I didn't give a crap. Said at that time. You're right. That's the How, thing. I do you didn't not remember the Phantom Menace coming out? Maybe I was too young. Was what year did Phantom Menace come 1998. out? 1998. 99. 99. 98. Oh, I was a wee lad. Okay, no, I was oh, way too small. Little lad. I was a small boy. I'm 32 now. Yeah. So. Yeah, you would have. You would have been like under 10. Yeah, sub like, ten. Yeah. And you're, not, you're just you're an infant. I was your in feet like eighth still. grade then, so yeah, you yeah. would have been like you, you would know, have been eight. Suckle on your mamas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, eight years I'll old. Have you know, I stopped no, at seven. Thank you very you much. Suckling. Right? Like, I hard seven. out at eight. seven. Seven. No, um, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, you would have been. Uh, yeah, you know, six or seven or whatever. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah. So it's a little beyond it. But I mean, yeah, you're right. But that's pretty normal. I think that's the best point. We were 12 in this. It's a normal Phantom sick. Menace age. Yeah. I watched Phantom Menace <laughs> yeah. and I was like, this movie is sweet. I like, saw it in theaters four times. I was, oh, wow. I was like really into it. Yeah. I just yeah. was yearning for more And all Wars. the grown-ups are rolling their eyes. And all the N64 <laughs> games that came out. The oh, N64 so games. Many good N64 Incredible, games. Yeah. right? Right. See, see, Shadow this, of the Empire. Pod this, Racer. <laughs> this is what I think really proves my point. It's like, are you into it and are you enjoying this? You know, so to speak, like, are you, are you, or are you thinking about this, this, this element here? I mean, I don't know. Let me posit this question. Oh boy. New one. A new <laughs> angle. Are we going to see a swing in cinema away from CGI spectacle? Well, we already have. Physical spectacle. I mean, well, not in, on a major level or anything like that, but I mean, Christopher Nolan's a perfect example. Never. You know, this is kind of what, what started the whole thing, but him, you know, kind of proselytizing the fact that there was no quote unquote CGI used in Oppenheimer, right? It's like, that's a point of pride, which is so weird. We have, and that's we what rubbed <clears throat> me the wrong way in the first place is it's kind of a weird insulting it's the wrong point brag. Of pride. Yeah, it's the yeah. wrong point of pride. And the reality is like, we're, we're talking about visual effects, right? We're talking about the department that catches more hot potatoes on a production than anyone else. <laughs> Yeah. They catch all the hottest potatoes right at the mm. end, just chuck in hot potatoes, and then yeah. everyone blames the person with the hot potato Wet, at the end of the song. It's like, yeah, hot come ones. on, fresh if out of the boiler. If you're John Woo and you just finished filming Hard Boiled, and you look around, you saw Star Wars, you saw all these composited explosions, you're like, look, all the explosions in our, my movie are just real explosions, and I'm proud of that. Yeah. It's like, more power to you. Yeah. Like, seriously, if once again, Doing something for real and having it be awesome 
is always an achievement. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like someone writes to create a great book <clears throat> and you're like, oh yeah, well I actually went out and did all those things. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess I just I just the the line in the sand that I draw is I don't blame the visual effects. Just, you know what I mean? Like right. because again, you're right, you're totally right. Like what was the explosion you guys showed me when I when I when I was so proud to show you the James Bond explosion on React. Oh, the one from Blown Away. And then yeah, and then you blew me away with that one. Like <laughs> yeah. that's a ama- mate like yes, more of that please. Yeah. The things that are feasible to do in real life, yes, more of that please. But when it's to such a degree that you're like no, you know what? I don't want any CGI in my film. Even when you need it for the Trinity explosion, mm-hmm. you need it. You can't do that with a yeah, little yeah. gas bomb. I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think James Bond and Oppenheimer, even though I haven't seen it, but I think I'm still allowed to criticize it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is, that's how it works, right? Um, you know, I've I've heard from everyone saying mm-hmm. saying it's a, uh, underwhelming, and it is, so it's yeah. like, and he's like, no CGI. I'm I'm Christopher Nolan, pretty good, <laughs> renowned filmmaker. <laughs> you do it better than me. No practical, no CGI. No, no CGI would ruin my film. Yes, <laughs> we We've took a glass a bulb <laughs> and some swirly <laughs> liquid, and uh, <laughs> and you will believe. I will use my magic to believe. You you will be believe. You'll be trapped in my mindscape where this is actually a nuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the true magic that he weaves. Yeah, he's, we've been joking about that. He spends that, two though. hours trying to convince you that it's a nuclear bomb at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, look, at, look at all these actors. They believe it's real. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, they're in they are acting their hearts out. <laughs> <laughs> and when I show you my glass bulb <laughs> with some swirly liquid and dust, you will be you will have no choice but to believe <laughs> it is a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Coming to my realm. <laughs> yeah, we've been joking that the only cgi that was used on oppenheimer was the removal of all the cgi <laughs> artists during the from credits. the credits yeah, yeah that was the short we were gonna film but then we realized it was probably because of all the vfx artists that were used to uh paint in the dress on the naked scene yeah that uh, was fast yeah so there's a nude scene you know if people are naked they have sex etc and then one country's like no 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 you must paint here uh, a dress. <laughs> you say paint the until like it's MS paint <laughs> and they're going frame by frame. Yeah. Uh, red shirt, yeah, yeah, uh, like, blue pants. Yeah, so they painted they painted clothes on <laughs> to a bunch of people, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. So I think those artists got cut, obviously, from like the releases where but there's also the dress wasn't used. I mean, no spoilers here, but there's there's the bomb goes a off. shot of the yeah, the bomb <laughs> goes off, guys. Heads up. Uh, but <laughs> but there's a shot at the end where it shows like the world from space and a rolling cloud of fire basically wrapping around it. I'm like, hold on a second. Maybe I'm misremembering it, but I don't think you can shoot that practically. You know, <laughs> unless they're did. saying what is our stock it's it's compositing stock assets and, and maybe they got a globe. Is it a minute? <laughs> <laughs> and sprayed smoke at it. <laughs> oh, that's possible. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he lit half the world on fire because he's got that kind of money, baby. I want to see that shot. That sounds like a CGI shot. It sounded, yeah, and it looked like one too. <laughs> Not in a bad <laughs> way, on. but just like, <laughs> but just like, like a, I was confused because he I'd heard so much about no CGI. I could be wrong. I mean, Again, I'm, sure I'm sure there's VFX in the movie. But CGI, computer generated imagery. It's I'm like sure there's CGI. Compositing, I guess, legally falls out of computer he, generated because yeah. it was caught on camera and I then mean, composited. If you're, if you as an audience member are making these distinctions, you don't actually care if there's yeah. VFX or CGI in the movie. You're just playing games. Yeah. Right? It's okay. We can all play games. Yeah. We can all have sports teams. We can all live in mm-hmm. our imaginary land. But like, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you generated something with CGI or with compositing, depending on the final product you're going to, mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, you're going to judge a, judge a film without even looking at VFX. It's just like, well, compositing, it's okay for me to watch. Versus CGI, it's not okay for me to watch. Like, no. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can get amazing results of compositing, results that you can't get with mm-hmm. CGI and vice versa. But just to blanket judge something, you yeah. know, to be like, well, compositing is only okay when I use filmed elements. It's like, well, whatever. But again, I, I think almost, it's like, go ahead, Jake. Well, you can finish your point because I kind of have another like take on this another angle once we yeah. finish this angle i mean my my thinking and i this is just from my perspective here but you know we know the immense amount of science and math that goes mm-hmm. into building these effects it's like mm-hmm. incredible achievements and hyper technical there is nothing there is nothing to tether the average person to those things mm-hmm. so whereas we look at it and we go wow masterfully done incredible the layman would go 
oh, it's just CGI. Mm -hmm. It's just a CGI. Oh, they didn't do it for real. <laughs> I, I, can, I can comprehend to some degree what it would be like to be near a huge explosion, right? Mm -hmm. And I can be in awe of that. Oh my gosh, they did that in real life? Mm -hmm. But I can't, if I'm just an average person, understand how do the technical think, achievement. How do you think the VFX yeah. supervisor of the Flash feels? Oh my gosh. Dark and soul. So twisted, tormented, all the genius things he pulled, the science, it's just like all in science touch with like visual, like there's so much visual effects in that movie, you know, mm. they're like, he's like, he's like weaving this visual Dude. landscape and these characters and clone shots. And then everyone's like, the VFX suck. Yeah. You know, like granted, I was, I said that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, well, he, he's a, he but like, it was obviously, you know, it was, you know, you start to deal with now, like the whole question of the effects in relationship to you know, the client mm -hmm. relationship thing of like, okay, studios, bids, things like this. And, you know, I don't know. I feel like there's an angle there that is also tainting the conversation too. Yeah. Can I, can I actually put out like a personal thing that's been on my mind for like a year? Mm. Oh boy. You've been <laughs> thinking about saying something <laughs> for a year. <laughs> I've just, I've just wow. been thinking about this, but this hasn't been like a thing that you make a video of, but here in the podcast, I guess I can finally talk about it. <gasps> but, so VFX artists react. We have this show, which is, I guess, like, I guess it's like the number one VFX criticism show of the internet. But, you know, when I talk about things as a normal person, I'm like, that was good or that sucked. You know, it doesn't mean it sucked, but it's just how people talk about things. Or at least some people talk about things. It sucked to watch it. Right. It's like you completely ignore how much work goes into <laughs> the entire stuff. reason why it exists. <laughs> yeah. You completely ignore how much work goes into things and you just come out like, that ah, sucked. Like, you know, I came out of Rogue One being like, Rogue One sucked. You know, but like you sit there and you look at like there's masterful filmmaking. There's talented people. Like when you set step back and you look at it like for real, it doesn't suck. Mm -hmm. There's so many incredible things to respect. But at the same time, Nico, the guy who isn't on YouTube and doesn't do VFX artists react, who just watches movies and he's just there with the millions of other people watching movies. Nico, the guy is like Rogue One sucked, right? Mm -hmm. And I've like I'm ha I've been having a really hard time reconciling that now with like my re like react personality and like what we do on the show because like on one hand I know how much work goes into things, but on the other hand you can't deny the human truth of being like. That sucked. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell me about it, right? Isn't that that's the worst thing? You know, when you're filming an episode with a guest and they show you an incredible shot that they had worked on, and you're like, "Holy cow, that is crazy!" You know, and in the back of your head, you're like, "Too bad." <laughs> Too <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, well, I don't know okay. how to deal it's, with this. It's, it's been tearing me apart. It's Lisa. really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really, really difficult because you know, there's yeah, there's what you're. It's what you're saying. It's like there's a ton of energy and talent and effort that goes into it. I mean, and what's it's the... really it's tragic when. <laughs> Even still, that gut reaction is just like. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying to the whole <laughs> film or to like, the effects show? Like, like, let's get to the next clip because this is a cringy movie. You know? <laughs> yeah. So in, in context of the movie. Okay, Nico, let's work through this, actually. This is good. <laughs> so what's the name of the show? VFX artists react. So do you feel like in that capacity, you are then obligated instead to wear that cap? Yes. Not I, the Nico cap. I, I am obligated and is probably responsible for to constantly be reiterating probably time it's yeah, probably right, producers right, right, right. probably yeah, directors yeah, yeah, yeah one can never blame the vfx artists <laughs> yeah, on the show. But one can sometimes blame the VFX sometimes artists. we do yeah. actually but how how is that a show though you know at that point you're just constantly like saying "Ooh, vfx artists vfx, boo -boo. VFX artists but it's excuse. okay little baby you know it's like <laughs> you, it's like oh do you know oh, it's no it's not dissimilar from we, we just me and my wife just got a place mm -hmm. and it's not in ruins but it needs a full gut rehab. Mm -hmm. So when we have friends over, we default to this apology tour as we take people <laughs> through the place. Yeah. And we're, you know, they're just happy for us. And they're like, wow, you have your own, you know, kitchen in unit, washer, dryer, this, that, and the other. And we're just going in a room going, so we're going to totally redo this whole thing and just explaining ourselves. <laughs> Sorry about this. You know, it's kind of the same parallel where it's like you're watching these things and you just feel the need to apologize. It's like, yeah. You know, oh, well, I didn't have enough time and I didn't have this. And that. But you're right. At the end of the day, if it's just a critique of the film itself, is is it it's is uh, it's did it work or did it not? Well, and so that was the question when we were watching the flash. That was the that was the whole flash thing, too. It's like you're like, oh, my God, like this is just I can't tell if this is a bad movie or if this is a bad VFX shot. And like eventually it became clear it's a bad movie. <laughs> You know, and also they were bad VFX shots, but 
<laughs> you know, but the thing is, is constantly you're like, oh yeah, but if you probably think about it, like this is probably a talented artist and it's the situation and the studio with the budget and blah, blah, blah. But you know, you get so sick of saying that. You're just yeah, like, screw yeah. that. This Nick a- even, yeah, Nick even said something. He's like, okay, guys, you guys have you've, you've, you've overdone it. You've overdone, you've we overcompensated yeah. for explaining <laughs> why this might look bad. Gosh, but it just at the same time, I guess now I'm realizing there is a duality to this thing because at the same time I feel an obligation to never stop saying that. Right. As a visual effects right. artist. Because what if that's the only one that someone tunes in to watch? Are they then taking away that, oh, these guys just sucked? But here's the thing. Here's <sighs> the thing. Sometimes I think it's a it's possible it's possible to critique something not based on like an individual. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, one person makes a painting and you go, that painting sucks. <laughs> Obviously, the person who painted it is the person <laughs> who is at fault. OK, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, sure, that's direct. And you can't say, oh, but, you know, they were very stressed that night and they had too much wine <laughs> when they were painting it. And the paint shop was closed the day before. They were trying to finish the painting and they couldn't get the right color. You know, it's like n- that doesn't matter. Here's it's a person a- making a painting. OK, Look. so that's the criticism. But then the moment you say that one shot from the flash sucked, mm. it's obviously like maybe there was a talented visual effects artist working on it. But it doesn't matter yeah. anymore because I don't need to know that. Like, I'm just watching a shot and it sucks. <laughs> you know, this shot sucks. And guess what? Is it that one VFX artist's fault? Maybe. Maybe not. It's it's kind of hard to tell because also there's this like idiot running Warner Brothers <laughs> who's basically driving the DC franchise into the ground. You know, <laughs> is it him? Is he the was guy super stressed. why this shot sucks? <laughs> You know, because or or maybe it's this nice like even gradient where everyone contributes a little shit into this pot, and then <laughs> it's now, like a jacuzzi, man. It's like it's a jacuzzi in a hotel. It's like an oh, it's oh, a no. gross <laughs> jacuzzi where it's like a it's VFX a artist who's not getting paid enough and doesn't care about the shot, and then you have like a script that's been mutilated by like twenty writers, and then you have a person who's like slashing a budget to try and get it out faster by a certain release date. Is it Ezra Miller's fault? <laughs> it's just stressful you know, imagining that. And, and, stuff, and, and, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whose fault it was. You know, the shot sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Because, Sam, you, you know what? You introduced me to the concept of no excuses filmmaking. No excuses filmmaking. No right? one cares how much money you have or hadn't. No, no one, one cares, cares what how happened. hard you worked or you didn't. No one cares about anything except the final product. Mm. It's like, oh, yeah. wow, cool music album. And it's like, oh, yeah, I just recorded it literally in one day. And you're like, wow, fun fact. You know, fun <laughs> fact versus the other guy who's like, yeah, I recorded this in one day. And you're like, I, I can tell, you know, <laughs> it sounds like shit. It's like, it's no longer a fun fact, meaning yeah. that fact kind of, kind of pointless, you know? Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't change the quality. doesn't change the quality. You yeah, know, we've and- been trying to be more criticizing of our own work with that mentality as well yeah. lately. Like, well, that's, I mean, that's, that's, I, I feel like that's the key to actually making stuff good is to be able to be like, you know talking to Sam and Sam's like here's an idea I'd be like eh, it's not good mm. or even it sucks and then it Sam goes oh, whatever you're right what about this and, you know it's yeah, like it's to be able to do that is, is so important but also like to have that realness with like your your media like as we doubt as we dip, dip our toes into the fringes of this like the studio system here and there so you like rub shoulders with some of the people working there I'm reminded of how careful everybody has to be mm-hmm. when like talking about those products yeah. And we don't have to be careful about our stuff at all. The part of me worries if this way, this dialogue, this internal dialogue of like being like, ah, whatever, that sucked. Like, is that just is that just me taking my years of reading YouTube comments on our own videos and having to like take that kind of criticism? Has that just manifested itself in like, you know, am I just propagating <laughs> the hurt another generation forwards? Or is this just how we are as humans? Well, you're not finding the people and saying that sucked. Right? Like you're leaving yeah, a movie right. theater and going, ah, I didn't like it. Yeah, you're right. Like, that's fine. I think there's nothing wrong with that at yeah, all. Yeah, if I were to individually speak to someone who contributed to something that I thought had sucked, <laughs> you know, I'd probably be a little more positive about it. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's all you give them. Oh, that's It's not like I'm not yeah. impolite. Yeah. It's like, hey, oh, you worked on Rogue One? It's like, tell me, hey, Sam, tell me exactly what you were saying when you walked out of the theater. Or Guillermo del Toro, he comes to meet me. I'm like, Sam. I heard you saw Shape of Water with your whole family. <laughs> what What is the first thing you said when you walked out of the theater? You know, I, I'd be like, yeah. oh yeah, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, uh, my mom loved it. <laughs> you know, like I'd be polite. I mean, the movie sucked, obviously. But <laughs> that's that's the. I, I didn't need to say it. That was the joke, right? Uh, uh, I, but, I think I think you are. You, that is your right as a movie guard because you have paid for the experience. And you can interpret that experience however you want to. Yeah. You yeah. know? So if you think it sucked, it sucked. It's fine. Because you, you paid for that. So yeah. unless you torrented it, then you can't say it sucked. <laughs> you just have to keep it to yourself. And there's also those people, like, it reminds me of the people that play like a thousand hours in a video game. They're like, hmm, this game sucks. Steam reviews. Yeah. Blow my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Literally a thousand hours and like, do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> no good. <laughs> uh, Once I hit hour 500, I was starting to think something was up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we used to get that kind of comment uh, at uh, stress level zero on some games. Like somebody yeah. would come in with that type of comment. Played a thousand hours. It's not yeah. Just, yeah like, legit. Then why did you play a thousand hours? They were just making sure, Jake. You're being <laughs> thorough. I mean, I mean watch, that's the thing. Went to the theater to watch the movie eight times just yeah. to, just to make sucks. sure. Yeah, I mean, geez, I think, I mean, it is like, there, but this is like kind of coming back to also like a, a bigger discussion about like human interaction at the same time, because, you know, a shot or a film is like an abstraction. You know, it's like literally just like images or a, or a film or something. It's moving. It's not it's not a person. It's not right. like. It's a representation. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a it's it's an it's a subjective abstraction representation of something else, and so it's like, oh, that sucked. But obviously, if we're working in the studio here, it's like, okay, well, Jordan, how many times have I told you something you worked on has sucked? Only a few, it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty low. <laughs> no, he's never told me. It's no, like. no, but that's what I'm saying. There's like there's, there's a there's a dialogue. You know, it's like it's not like it's like if even if like you saw something I, that I made or worked on that needs improvement, or vice versa. Yeah, you don't just lead in with like that sucks. You know, you just say something like, "What's up with the eyebrows?" Yeah, what's up with the eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> There's something going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but yeah, I think that's 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 the thing too. It's like there is that distinction between like the talented people who create something and then the result too. Yeah, you know, I don't. Know. There's definitely like, there's also that thought I have like because. There's there's respectful Nico who lives in the system and can talk to people and he's a professional. And then there's like bad boy internet VFX artist Nico who's a YouTuber and has no boss and doesn't take any shit from anybody. Um, <laughs> which, which by the way, that Nico thinks he's a way tougher guy than he actually is. Um, <laughs> he wears leather jackets off camera, guys. Yeah, leather vests. <laughs> but, but there's definitely like a, a the emperor has no clothes thing that I feel like we're the only ones one of the few people positioned on YouTube that can be the people be like, hey, wait, that guy's not wearing any clothes. You guys are all saying he's wearing cool clothes. He's not wearing anything. You know, it's like it's when people, a lot of VFX shots are like that. A lot of movies are like that. Where there's talk about how this is cutting edge or like, you know, big PR pushes about something looking a certain way or being mm -hmm. done a certain way. And you sit down and you're like, no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look, it didn't do anything new. It did this, did it new. And you're like, we're the only ones sometimes I feel like that step out and say that or can even be comfortable enough to say that about a big budget film where it's like, mm -hmm. This shot was a mistake. This didn't work. This was a problem. Yeah. They failed at this, mm -hmm. which we can say that about our work all the time. We do say that about our work all the time because I guess in a way we don't have millions and millions and millions of dollars at stake. When you have millions and millions of dollars at stake, you don't want anybody saying that you failed, you know? But at the same time, true artistry means you can say you failed. True artistry means embracing that and being open about your work. Mm. And it's I like, think that's why the show works. Yeah, it's like if when the money's saying you can't, that's a good sign that you are something's wrong. <laughs> when he's like, "Well, there's too much money for me to say this," it's like, "Okay, well then you're not speaking honestly." Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's and that you know to your point, Jake, that is the the power of the show, specifically the OG React episodes. Because mm -hmm. I saw a few comments here and there about you know when we do have guests, it's like, "Oh, you should present them with you know their worst." work or or, <laughs> wor or work that they're not proud of and may I, I guess from an educational perspective it would be kind of interesting to know hey what went wrong or what were the the you know the the issues that arose during the but then the question comes how much can they really say and you like you said they're so they have to be so careful because right. again there's this interconnectedness in the community that may cost them future work so they don't have the freedom to just speak openly like that and us putting them in that position isn't really fair mm -hmm. in many ways so yeah it'd be great though to know but yeah and once in a while we get somebody through the the couch you know who 
who has a position professionally where they can speak like that. Like Tim Miller is a great example. Yeah. He's like, whatever, I'll say whatever I want. Yeah. And he's just maintained that as his like modus operandi forever. Mm -hmm. So if you work with Tim Miller, that's what you're getting, you know? Um, and that's super cool when, when we have those kind of guests. They're very rare. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's hard to find people like that in the industry. Not because people are dishonest, but because somebody having that kind of independence is tricky to find. Yeah. 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 It's like that in almost any industry. You know, there's this, there's some people who have done it at such a level of excellence that they've risen to the top and they can say and speak openly about the condition of whatever their product is. But then there's a bunch of people between them and the consumer of that product that are actually pushing the product out that probably can't do that because mm -hmm. A, it's like like you said, Jordan, it might might cost them work in the future, but also B, it, it might not even be their place necessarily to say that. Um, so you just hope that the few people who are at the top of whatever given thing it is are actually able to speak honestly about it because mm -hmm. um, that's that actually helps the industry in the long run yeah what, what's what's like the be what's the worst vfx shot in a good movie you guys can think of like what's the what is there a classic one like a, oh that's that's bad i mean there's there is one <sighs> shot in particular in lord of the rings i think it's fellowship of the yes Ring. getting on the elephant Oh, getting on the elephant. Oh, oh, you're that's uh, return. Return of the king. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That fellowship of the now that mine is very minor. Mine is like not visible very much unless you're looking for it. But it's when the camera flies up past the statues, the stuffy oh. statues. You know? you know, I looked at that shot. I couldn't see any problems. I gotta show you because there's a <laughs> bird's nest on its eye or something. It's one of the worst. I, I, I so for VFX Arts React, I was like, I had heard about this from you, and I looked for it, and I looked for it, and I looked for it, and I couldn't find it. I gotta show you. I gotta show you <laughs> off camera. Well, we're recording an episode <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. And, uh, I already got my stuff. Gladiator tomorrow. in Gladiator, there's a <laughs> shot where the tigers are attacking him. Mm. They're not that great, but at the same time, it was 2001, and they were doing full CG tigers jumping onto him. Well, he's mm -hmm. in this fight. And so, you know, the rest well, of the I mean, movie's so damn good that you just look right past mm -hmm. it. Well, I mean, even the way you guys say it, you say it so like hesitantly. You know? <laughs> I love Lord of the Rings. Dude, that's you know my saying? freaking. Because like they're cool pieces. They're cool, yeah. they're cool movies. Yeah. And so like, I still think that's really what we're kind of still talking about here, which is, yeah. oh, it was really cool. So, hey, something didn't look totally real. Doesn't matter. I'm into it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it it's it's not gonna like ruin the experience. Yeah. Just because you can go, oh, that's CGI. Yeah, it was my 16th viewing and I paused it. I laughed at it with my roommate for about 10 seconds, and then I continued to watch the rest of the movie. <laughs> uh yeah. completely consumed by the incredible story. So, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, you're, you're totally right. A shot did come to mind. Remember Anakin Skywalker trying to ride that one creature in the yeah. second Star Wars prequel? Oh, that's <laughs> that's the that's for, yeah, because for me it's it's like Legolas <laughs> hopping on that ogre or whatever. Yeah. You know, in two towers, I think it is. Mm -hmm. It's like it's always that. It's always a character hopping on another yeah, creature. Yeah, it is. Isn't it's tough weird? to do. Yeah. Well, it's because they have like a comped person who's just like, you know. 2D tracked. Yeah, hair perfectly yeah. still. Yeah. It just never works. I mean, I think really the CG, just coming back to like this, like the topic question though, it's like, I think people's like idea of like bad CGI is really just closely tied to like soulless media mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, where it's like, okay, yeah. well, I'm making a piece. And so I'm going to decide what in the piece I'm going to try and do for real and what is going to be CGI. And very often you get pieces that are just like, oh, we'll just do it all. It's all it's all CGI, mm -hmm. you know, and and it usually turns out poorly. And it's kind of like, well, it's because I don't know, maybe you needed to handle this idea with more care or something, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, still the Flash versus Man of Steel are great examples because there's lots of moments in the Flash that they already did in Man of Steel, like same fighting techniques and visual effects and styles. And you like watch both films and you're like, OK, that's cool that's well done and that one's not mm. you know and you're like well why is it like we they've already done it the same studio did this mm -hmm. you know was it that hard to replicate something that's already been done and apparently it is and so the only answer of why it wasn't as good as the original is because just someone didn't care enough about making it and that's when you're like okay this is soulless now mm -hmm. like this this is a sign not necessarily that it's fake or that's not real but it's like someone didn't care 
That's how Dean felt in Flash. Making this cool. Yeah, he he said he was left feeling bad for liking it. Like liking the character. Like yeah. he's being made fun of. <laughs> like they took his money and then they were just picking on him by showing him the movie. When when you were doing freelance, Jordan, did you find yourself having to either A fight <laughs> to invest yourself in something that you didn't want to be invested in, or B fighting to not invest yourself into something that you shouldn't be investing yourself into because it's just a job. Mm. You know, like when you have to assassinate somebody. And it's just a job. Just you can't, a job. You can't yeah. fall in love or anything. Purely business. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my my freelance journey, man, like you know, the, it's a it's a meat grinder. It really is, like to a certain degree. And and you know, I had my experience as just a freelance artist. I had my experience as a freelance supervisor and supervisor slash artist on all these different jobs. And like it really depends on the people you surround yourself with. Like I learned with some people, it's best to just keep the department separate. Like don't be friends and also work for because mm -hmm. a, a lot of the times you can get taken advantage of in, in that way. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people that you can really trust. But what what I started to find on quite a few sets is there's this general sense of like misery or negativity, which is, it, it confounds me a little bit because at the end of the day, we are still making some pretty cool stuff. Um, but in visual effects, I mean, unless you're working with a post house that will provide you some assistance to help gather assets and whatnot on set, you're typically a department of one. And there's a, a freedom associated with that because you kind of have the your you know rule of the roost for that department, which is nice. But at the same time, it you're the first. It's the first day of school every day, mm. and it and at a certain point, I did feel myself start to turn a corner into, oh no, <laughs> you know, yeah. and and coming from where I came from, like. I've always been quite happy-go-lucky when it comes to this stuff and always very excited to jump on projects and whatnot, but I was starting to turn that corner. And, I, you know, as luck would have it, the day that Jake reached out to me that I'd gotten, uh, I guess I was a finalist for the position here, was undeniably my worst day on set. Oh, really? It was awful, dude. It was awful. And I was literally debating my future oh, wow. on set when I got that <laughs> that message. And then I was wow. beaming the whole day. I was like, you can't bring me down anymore. <laughs> you can't stop me now. Misery. Um, yeah. So it's, it's hard. It's a constant fight. You have to like, and that's why I do so much study on my own time because mm. I, I work to preserve the spark of curiosity yeah. apart from that. So I was becoming like, you know, there was like a duality to what I was doing. Um, cause I, I, I felt no sense of ownership or, or creativity and in, in the client work side yeah i Which feel is, you know i feel like that aspect of project leadership just gets really overlooked when people talk about like filmmaking and being a good filmmaker it's like apparently like, oh you can be a good filmmaker if you had a good script like if you do a bad job managing your team or inspiring them that's ah, it's the producer's fault it's like well that's like you're saying it's almost just as important if not more important than anything else to have your team be inspired and like happy to work on the art together and be doing something together like that kind of leadership that's a real magic thing to have. Yeah. If you can bring it to set. And it's it's driven heavily by the director, very, very heavily by the director. Um, that shifts the tone of the set. And also if, you know, I did a lot of music video stuff by the artist too. And this is my cue to say Jay Balvin is a gem of a human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing a video with him and I didn't really know him very well. It was arguably one of the most hectic days on set. It was chaos. And he came in like this beam of light and was just thanking everybody and so profusely grateful. And that is what I realized drives me. And I'm sure so many other people, like, yes, we do it for the money so that we can pay the bills. It's crucial. But man, feeling appreciated. That is the spark that keeps people going on set. It's like so, so crucial um, to, to experience. So I encourage any directors out there, make, make your crew feel appreciated. It's very mm -hmm. important. Yeah. And on all the grips and gaffers out there, you're the ones who actually decide who's cool on set, and we're all really just trying to impress you guys. Gosh, <laughs> gosh, that group, man. Those are the scariest kids in They're school. The scariest dude. ones, man. They're so scary. Man. I'm just like, please light uh, me. Can I sit with you at lunch? Is that cool? <laughs> gosh, darn it, man. Also, the way that they light you, they'll light they'll light you bad if they don't like you. Yeah. Um, no. So I have one more kind of like turn in this conversation. Um, do you think that any of this? Uh, I guess like idea of cgi somehow being this bad word is in any way related to just how magnificently it has been done in the last 15 years because with the advance of computer technology i mean we've seen some incredible use of mm -hmm. visual effects like stunning 
you'd show it to somebody 30 years ago and they would not know how you did it or where it came from or how it was done. And consumer, like viewers just look at it and go, yeah, that was cool. You know, <laughs> what's next? <laughs> but th- th- it's like, guys, do you realize like that? There's so many examples, but you know, they're, they're like destroying bi- cities in some of these, you know, Marvel fights and people just go, yeah, this is, this is what I came to see. Yeah, this is it. This is it. But it's like, there's, there's, how did they do that? CGI. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They did it with CGI. The buttons. It's like, yeah, the yeah, button. I, I, I think it's just, I think it's the relationship to money that's like throwing people off. Not that like, it's, oh, you want to make money doing CGI, but that like spectacle and blockbuster have become like such a big part of this that it feels to me it feels like modern cinema makes up for a lack of either commitment by the talent or commitment by the, like the story writing team or even the directing team they make up for that lack of commitment with visual effects it's like oh here's an actor that you really like cool we had him for a week all the rest of its visual effects it's like no i want to see that person perform i want to see them sweat I want to see them cry and I want to see them bleed. I want them to be on that project for at least eight months. Mm. Like when I go to see something that's like a million bajillion dollar production, that's like supposed to be an earth moving production. I expect the main talent to be there for more than two weeks filming that thing, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I get that vibe that VFX has kind of become this thing that's like just lifting everything else up on its shoulders so that all these like, you know, famous actors and the celebrities and the stardom and like the, you know, the advertising campaigns and the merch deals you know, all that can actually sit up there and it's like VFX and CGI that lifts it up there, you mm. know? that That's, I think, what to me has like soured it for me a little bit or at least made it that bad word, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. It also doesn't help that, you know, a lot of the times visual effects is supposed to be invisible mm-hmm. and so you miss all the good. <laughs> like, by design, <laughs> you don't see any of it mm-hmm. and then what you catch, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, you did a bad job hiding. Oh, you, I caught all four of you. And it's like, dude, there's 300 of us. <laughs> you caught the four worst ones, <laughs> you know, but, you know, to them. Yeah. So there's, this, there's maybe another aspect of this, too, which is just, this is probably just very much a me thing, but like watching something and be like, oh, man, they put all the work in for this. They spent this much money for this. Like, and nothing solidifies that more than Avatar. And not to say Avatar is not a bad film. But it's one of those things where like it doesn't it doesn't feel like the story of Avatar is really any as any on any higher level than any other like decent summer blockbuster movie. And so when I you go can and just read like, the history of the Nez Pierce Native American tribe if you want to. Well, like, know I mean, it. sure. I mean, look, the story is a little janky. But, no, like, but the point thing is, like you go in, it's like they put all of like all this effort into this film. It's like, but is there not a like if they have, you know teams of hundreds working for years to do the VFX of Avatar, why can't you have a team of, well, maybe not hundreds, but a team of hundreds working for years to write the story, well, you know? I mean, sure, but like if you pick a director in Hollywood that uh, could swing pulling that off, though. No, you're right. It's, it's like, really just James so, Is Cameron. it James Cameron, director of like Titanic and, and if that's True the movie Lies he wants and to Terminator make, that's the movie we get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's like, I'm like, this is fine. Like, he, yeah. yeah, he, I mean, who else would want it? Like Steven Spielberg, it's like, we've seen what his cgi you know films look like yeah. basically and it's like i'm not saying the avatar is a bad film it just it feels feels odd to have so many resources put into that one versus others versus what what is, what, what movie should have had that treatment Ooh, good question yeah that's, well, that's like a financial part. risk reward thing though See, that that's I, not I, a decision I, made I at the creative it, level that's, I know a, the that's feeling. a risk for the project and, and the studio is saying we're going to risk this much because we think I mean the last one did a billion dollars in like what a couple weeks so we're yeah. going to risk we're going to risk it again True. it's just if not Avatar then what you know it's like another Jurassic Park movie or mm. Indiana Jones is that it maybe give they some lost, to Oppenheimer they lost like 400 million no 200 million dollars in Indiana Jones oh Oops. did they really yeah <gasps> Well, it's because they made a really bad one, and then they thought, "Let's make one more." There's, there's only been like three films that made money this summer. It's yeah, like, Flash lost about two hundred million as well. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Die. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm, it's like, the only way. It really is the only way. Please yeah. stop making car- garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, I've said this before, but it's the exact same parallel to the pregame order thing. Yeah. It's like yep. Cyberpunk is a perfect yep. example. 
everybody poured their money into it and it was a dud. And there's so many other games like that. You pour your money in and it comes out super buggy. They don't care because at the end of the day, you already paid for it. It doesn't make yeah. a difference. So, you know, people are voting with their money and we're seeing that with movies is people are tired. Marvel had an amazing streak, dude. Like leading to Endgame, that was so hype and that was so fun. And then okay, it's done out. now. <laughs> it's, it's done, done now. now. But no, it's not. Here is a whole new slew of people. Nobody cares anymore. It's like, yeah. but the, none of these superheroes are even cool. Like all the ones you picked, like I remembered. Yeah. And then it's like, here's all these ones. Here's like Blue Beetle. Miss Marvel. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, there's like yeah, it's Marvels? gonna take like what it's are gonna these take people? somebody. Marvels? It's gonna there's take scroll, somebody with secret real... invasions. I'm like, who are it's... these scrolls? I want Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's gonna like, take somebody with real you. creative vision at the top to yeah. like, th- uh, does. to like harness this, and that's mm-hmm. not an easy person to find it because these companies, by and large, are you know they're structured like businesses, and so you, you, you it, it requires that person to come in with the new vision and go, look, Marvel, good job, guys, you did a great thing, everyone loved it. Now we're gonna do this. Mm-hmm. It, we're not gonna try to cop like ape your style and, and and copy it we're gonna do something totally different and yeah the next we need to 10 find years a new of cinema franchise. are gonna be this yeah spongebob cinematic universe dude mario <laughs> cinematic universe coming soon barbie cinematic I mean, it was universe it was soon. zombies before it was zombies and werewolves and vampires before marvel <laughs> that's very true actually yeah, yeah now it's superheroes we gone wild it was world yeah. war ii before that by the way it was right. world war ii before that yeah yeah yeah. And then the 90s were just like, yeah, everyone's getting kidnapped. Right? <laughs> like 90% of 90s movies were just like, yeah. just kidnapped my daughter. And then 80s, 80s was just action heroes. Mm-hmm. 80s was just was... like, I'm a cop, but I don't act like one. Ooh. Yeah. I'm bad. I'm a bad I'm cop. Bad cop. <laughs> I'm struggling to keep my job. <laughs> I'm a cop, but I have to break the rules to do what I think is right. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. I'm down yep. for that. And before that, it was just a black and white good guy, bad guy situation. Yeah, well, oh, you what's had the next? 70s. I'm excited. You had the 70s and like the weird abstraction, you know, like type <laughs> the 70s, like, oh, we forgot how to edit films. Peak, peak, <laughs> yeah. peak action yeah. editing is 70s. Se- we're like, we forgot how to edit, but there's boobs. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Or wow. no, the 70s is also like, yo, you guys ever think about what the future is going to be like? It's like clearly not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got, I got real wacky ideas for the future. Yo, gonna be the like... future's gonna be nuts. Check out these wacky like bulbs and these <laughs> spheres people are gonna wear on their heads and these wacky like red jumpsuits. <laughs> We're all just referring to just Stanley trying to recover from the Beatles. Yeah. 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 So times. I don't know. There'll be another there'll be another thing, but hopefully it comes soon because mm-hmm. it's uh it's a desert out there, boys. It is, man. Oh yeah. I'm just hoping we see. Uh, a and now no a, one's making movies anymore. I'm, I'm hoping. It's perfect. I hope, I'm hoping it's perfect we see timing. a little revitalization of the '90s era, entertaining films made for a budget that mm-hmm. matches the reach of the audience, and that's it. There's no series being milked for time on Netflix. There's no stuff being made to fit a demographic and fill a slate. There's no movies being made because they can make money according to the bottom line. There's just I have a good idea for a show. Give me a budget that matches the size of the audience that'll go watch it. Let's make it. I'm just hoping mm-hmm. those start happening more and more. And what? Yeah, I, I want will. Netflix to start using their damn algorithm. Like, yeah, look at what I'm watching and like all the closest people around me, like who watch similar things and just mash everything up. You know, mm-hmm. I watch Viking animes. You know, that's cool. I watch sci fi shows like do a sci fi Viking anime <laughs> thing, you know, like whatever. Like, just who cares? Just make make it happen. Like you have the data. Mm, yeah. Like come up, force it to be original. You know, just like play. Uh, what is it? What are those games? But you need an executive like, at the top who's into Viking anime sci-fi. I know, right, I know, right. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, it's just get the bucket of all my like, you know, tags. Yeah, you know, like all all the metadata <laughs> that we all have. Like, just take take a scoop, and turn that into a script. <laughs> how hard can it be you go. and you gotta make it for a few bucks because Sam will watch it and I'll probably watch it too and that'll be about the end of it <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah oh, that's man. where we're headed Our, yeah or oh, sir, well. serve me more properties that I love please uh, serve pro- me please sir <laughs> we're seeing the we dying breath like. of a mass take my favorite experience. properties and make cinematic universes out of them mm. yeah all right Good stuff, <laughs> dude. I th- Good although, stuff. Uh, was, did we just go full circle though? Too with Hollywood, it's like it. When's the point where like everything's going to have been made? They're like, guys, 
we've searched the last 3,000 years for like franchises. You know, we did them all. You know what I keep hearing <laughs> is the constant return to Hollywood is America's greatest import and they're killing it. It's like, ah, no, come on, guys. <laughs> we make a lot of other good things besides Hollywood. <laughs> greatest export, you mean? Greatest yeah. export. Sorry, that's why I said yeah. export, right? Or did I say import? You said import. You said import. I'm a doofus. I meant export. <laughs> it's fear. Yeah. <laughs> export is the greatest fear. Actually, our no, greatest... no, fear is the greatest export. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great, actually, okay. I thought our greatest export was uh, Unreal Engine 5. Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Good. Yeah. Good. iPhones aren't bad either. iPhones. <laughs> Who who is exporting iPhones? <laughs> That's a question. Well, we're exporting the design to a good yeah. factory. Yeah, <laughs> it's not in America. That's right. Yeah, made. price the build five bucks. Yeah, price to design them five trillion. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what matters. Yeah, I don't. I'm not worried about Hollywood as an export. I think that's a okay. Just make your media, make people, make people. Yeah, happy to watch I, I think if, if you do have a sustained period of downturn, uh, I mean, the strike honestly is going to work towards that uh, for better or for worse. But also, if you have a sustained period of downturn on like some of these big risks and these blockbuster risks, that model will have to go away and they'll mm -hmm. have to turn to more what you said like, let's be poignant and pick a budget for the size of the audience that we think it's going to reach and really just let creators do their thing and that's not the worst universe to live in no, there'd be a lot all. of jobs there'd be a ton of work there'd be a flourishing creative industry so mm -hmm. maybe that's what'll happen hopefully and we've seen yeah. i mean we've seen that people are willing to go to the theater still like yeah. barbie oppenheimer like a lot of a lot a lot of people showed up for that yeah and, and like, paid I, money didn't, for that I didn't go to either of them because of the spectacle yeah, I haven't gone to Oppenheimer, so I didn't even go for any reason on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't go to Barbie to be like, "Ooh, the big CGI set pieces." Like, you know. Yeah, I went to Barbie for the writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the performances, for the quirky scenes and performances of your favorite childhood toys. Mm. And yep. Ryan Gosling, hey, girl. Ryan, Go yeah, aka just Ryan Gosling. Yeah, Ryan Gosling, pretty much <laughs> <laughs> killed that movie. I mean, Margot Robbie did a great job. But I Ryan heard he was. I heard he was real. amazing. Yeah, super hot. <laughs> super funny <laughs> super hot that's, that's it we got Ryan Gosling he might say four things and we got Margot Robbie super hot <laughs> that's it that's yeah. all you need come on in alright well hey cool. that was a fun one um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it out there watching and listening and uh, see you on the next one alright so good. long everybody so long sorry if I offended anyone <laughs> no, you can't I, back I, down now. I play you can't. A character oh, yeah, in real don't life. apologize now, Sam. <laughs>